Okay. okay. So you let me know. I'll give her ten. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's been a long time since I got a 10. <laughs> so. Take it. Take it. I will take it. I will own it. <laughs> no. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's wonderful when two very talented people, three very talented people in this case, Robert is not here, uh, get together. But I would like to know how the two of you found each other for the lighthouse. Ready? I saw uh, Rob's first film, uh, first feature, uh, called The Witch, the, yes. and I thought it was a very special movie, and I thought, who made this? And uh, I tracked him down, and I met with him, and I said, listen, if you have something for me to do, I'd love to uh, be with you uh, on your, you know, whatever project you have to do. Because I felt deeply that um, he would be someone that I'd like to be around and would inspire me and would, uh, it would be a good situation. I go towards situations and people and this was a case of uh, seeing something extraordinary and trying to find out where it came from and it led to him. So you actively sought out I did. Robert. That's wonderful. And it's not just, it's not just like networking. I, I have done that before, but it was very specific. You're like, wow, I, uh, I, respond to this in such a personal way, I appreciate it so much, you know, that somehow you believe that maybe it would be mutual. Uh, what exactly got so much under your skin in The Witch that made you He created a world, he created a world that was so specific, was so easy as a spectator to enter it in a very full way. And a, I agree. And a particular amazing thing, since it's a period film, I find period films People point to it. Yes, they have details. Yes, they do research. But he has a different relationship to that uh, research. People show, they point, they, they offer it up. He really, in a very uh, integrated way, takes on these details. And it feels like he expresses his experience through another time. I mean, I'll let him talk. It's kind of funny to speak on his behalf. But, but that's what my sense was. Also, the performing was very interesting because I didn't know who was a performer and who wasn't. Clearly, the children weren't performers, but they were in the same world as the adult actors. And uh, there was just something about the tone, and I like that, that lively, non-actor, but very elevated performance style. I'm interested in that, so I think I sought him out for that as well. I agree a hundred percent. All of that has uh, come, you know, to has come across very intensely for me too. And one thing that I find wonderful, Robert, I'd like to know uh, from you about it, is that you really delve into creating a world that doesn't exist but has mm -hmm. existed or might have mm -hmm. existed from the stuffing in a mattress. Beautiful. It's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, to the lighthouse which you had built from scratch. Uh, what exactly are you looking for when you do that? Uh, is, it, is it an inner uh, need you have to satisfy for uh, concreteness or what do you think it is? Yeah, I mean, it must be something pretty primal because I'm quite into it, but I, I just, I, I, um, there's, there's, I, I've talked about it in many different ways and, and, if, and, and so that means I, I don't know, <laughs> but, but I think, good answer, <laughs> very good, always um, admit it, <laughs> but, but I think, you know, for, for, uh, um, for, for the, my method of sort of just sticking to the research and copying, uh, paintings and, and, and stuff, uh, Kubrick credits that, to Franco Zeffirelli to be the first director to do that, but Murnau and Alban Grau were trying to do that in Nosferatu in, in 1922. Yes. So different. So this is something a method that has worked for different people at different times. For for me, like Willem is has the great fortune to be working with Saint Guillermo del Toro soon, and his films are so beautiful. And with Crimson Peak or whatever, he is uh, looking at Victorian. Uh, 
the Victorian period, but then he's doing his own thing. And he's inventing furniture and clothing that has to do with the characters and their like psychology. And, uh, and, and I would find creating a world like that to be uh, crippling, too, too, too much on my shoulders. Uh, I, I, uh, I like having to say, our goal is accuracy. Like we don't, we can't, never, we can never know what that is. It's always going to be an interpretation, but we're just trying to like find the thing and carry it out. So we're not spending time thinking about like, does this shirt sleeve like say the most about this character in the scene? No, this is the shirt sleeve that a lighthouse keeper had in 1890. The end. Move on. And when you're doing choices, when you're not making choices, when when the research is making choices for you. I, I think that you can create a, a larger accumulation of details uh, and because you can. There's you just have more time uh, to, to just to just make more stuff, uh, and, and that creates a more specific atmosphere. Like every every single thing from the doorknobs to the floor nails to the buttons to to Defoe's teeth to the, to the format that we shoot uh, the film Which is on. Interesting. Uh, thanks is is not just aesthetics for aesthetics sake there to take us into another world and especially a movie like The Lighthouse which I'm saying this not necessarily in a negative way which doesn't have much of a plot like you need that atmosphere to carry you I mean look if you have a great story and and serviceable performances not even good performances but serviceable performances with a great script you don't need any of the stuff that I'm talking about but for a movie that is uh, lean on plot it, it is helpful to have this and I also just like it anyway I'd rather have all that <laughs> stuff even in a movie that has a traditional narrative uh, it's it's it, I like watching movies like that and I like and, and, and it's just how cool is it that someone let me build a lighthouse it's amazing um, and but 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 I just but I enjoy the act of, of research as much as I like I don't know yeah well, when he's talking I'm thinking I I have a uh kind of parallel thing to that as an right. actor. Because when he's talking about the research, for example, I have a similar thing. I have no problem with copying. And I don't th ever think of choices. I think about applying myself and, f and finding those details that kind of tell me what to do or, or give myself to a situation. And the situation tells me what to do. I don't decide because somehow when you offer yourself up to things that have a kind of factuality it and you really submit to them then you you're opening yourself up to kind of the grand swirl of things because those things exist because of a condition and you're becoming one with that condition and you're not just pointing or telling a story you're really inhabiting and it's a magical thing that happens and much is made of actors' choices or uh, intelligence or, or interpretation. I don't believe in an interpretation. I believe in inhabiting. And the interpretation will happen out of the framing, out of uh, your relationship uh, to the things that are happening. The character is revealed through action. You can't help it. I mean, it becomes inevitable. Yeah, it, you, it becomes inevitable. There's a truth to it that didn't come from you, it only came from you to the degree that you have opened yourself up to what is. And it's very difficult, but if you open yourself to see what is a, a, a reality beyond what is our agreed on reality, then you're really talking. Then you're really revealing something that is going to touch people and it's going to resonate with people because it's beyond social convention, it's beyond cultural conditioning, it's sort of true objectively yeah yeah you know i mean i think i think that like is, i'm sorry but when he was no, talking the, the, i got very excited no thought, no no this is why i like no, this guy no, <laughs> no but i mean i think i think i think it's like, true i think uh <laughs> there you know like the, the the all all of the camera movement camera placement is is planned and 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 we're we're trying we're, we're trying to get what we've we've planned like yes because we're so well planned we can't adjust to something that, that is new that happens in the moment, but but it can be just as satisfying and just as um, 
uh, spont spontaneous to hit what you've planned to do. When Kurosawa, uh, perhaps he did this on all of his later films, but, when, but, but, I, but with, with, I know because I, with Ron that Kurosawa would rehearse all day uh, and then just do one take, you know? And so that one take, as I'm not like, I don't really want to cry for some reason, but that one take has to be like what Willem was, was describing, you know, that, that magic of moment where, where something else is, is going on. And you, you made me a bit emotional thinking about it, <laughs> <laughs> thinking about Kurosawa working like that. Would it be that uh, once you do that and you're liberated, you also elevate yourself above any topical uh, circumstances and discussions that a movie might be bringing to the surface because we can be very topical in our discussion of the lighthouse or the witch but there's also something that goes far beyond it in both movies do you think that helps as well I mean that's certainly the 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 hope I mean I'm I'm trying to do archetypal storytelling which is not I, that, that's a high bar but you know you're succeeding well thank you're you not trying. but <laughs> you know Marie Louise von Franz uh, who is a prominent Jungian talked about uh, Hans Christian Andersen fairy tales would as the 20th century continued would continue to fade into the background because he's too like marred by Victorian mores whereas the grim fairy tales are gonna like live on and 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 you know Little Mermaid's still kicking around but overall like it, she's she's right you know how how I don't know what farting lighthouse keepers has to do with that but, <laughs> but you know somehow he does <laughs> now um, what's uh, amazing is that you have two actors uh, with a lot of ordinary dialogue in your case, Willem, you have to wrap around, you wrap your tongue around some very folksy uh, <laughs> lines which you took from uh, Herman Melville and uh, among others. I mean, uh, the, the, maritime the, tales. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then there's Robert who barely says a word for, you know, the best part of the movie. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that in The Witch, um, the parents had a lot to say, and uh, Anya Taylor Joy's character didn't. Uh, do you think, uh, uh, is it a conscious decision that the, the character that is being oppressed and pushed around and ground down uh, will react with uh, silence? No, but, uh, but, but, but I think. Uh, uh, Th those characters are subservient. I mean, Thomason as uh, a teenage girl um, in a is is sort of in the lowest possible place in in society. So, yeah, like even though it's her movie, like her dad does most of the talking, but that's because it's the 1630s. But then both Rob and Anya get to, or whatever the hell Rob's character's name is, and and Thomason. Um, have a breaking point. You know, I really can't stand watching The Witch. I really can't stand watching it. But uh, I had... I, I not? Does it, it's, know, over. it's over. And it's also, over. It's, it's over. It's, it's over. over. <laughs> and, but, but, but I was made to watch it again recently because we were doing the HDR color correct. And the one scene when I, when I have been made to watch a movie that I get energized is when she finally stands up to her dad, you know? And that's the thing, it's also like when, when Pattinson's character, when he finally pushes him to break, like, you know, that's, that should be exciting to an audience to see all that pressure build up and then explode. You know, they're telling me to come, you know? Oh, but well, we're having so much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I just like to say that um, uh, the format you chose, you said it's not just an aesthetic decision. I had the impression from the very first second that I was, uh, I don't know, opening a door into another time or perhaps into someone else's mind. And that was very, very satisfying, very Thank you. interesting. And Willem, you know, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I think, you know, you have 
so many, so many great parts in your pocket. But may I say, I think you are in a particularly radiant uh, couple of years <laughs> oh, in great. your career. It's, you. it's really something to see. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. I'm very That's happy very to be sweet. here today. Thank you so much for talking yeah. to me. Well, we enjoyed Thank it. You. <laughs> yeah, very Thank, nice. you Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you.